Hi everybody. Well, here I am somewhere very different today, as you can tell, but somewhere very appropriate for this video, as, uh, as I will reveal later on. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, some of you might have seen that I did a video about a CD that I bought from Strawberry Field in Liverpool, and it was uh, an interview CD of John Lennon's sister, Julia Baird, interviewing Paul McCartney back in 1987. So I put this video out and uh, later on that evening I got an email from uh, somebody at Strawberry Field saying um, thank you very much, uh, we've had about 50 orders for this CD this evening. Uh, apparently they'd asked a couple of people who put orders in where they'd heard about it and it led them back to my video. Uh, and they said brilliant thank you very much uh, it's uh, you know the money that they raise it does loads of good work for uh, disadvantaged people in the Liverpool area they said we'd like to send you a couple of things as a thank you um, a couple of t-shirts which this is one of them here um, and a t-shirt that I wore in a video that I did a couple of weeks ago about the the fifth anniversary of the Beatles anniversary editions uh, that was the other t-shirt uh, but they also wanted to send me this book imagine this by Julia Baird uh, which it's actually quite an old book it's, it's about 15 years old but it's just something that had completely passed me by and I didn't really know about it and uh, they've sent me this signed by Julia inside which is great um, my understanding is that all the copies that they have at Strawberry Field that they sell on their website are signed by Julia I believe that to be the case uh, so this they sent me this book they said we'd be interested to know your thoughts on it and so I'm out here on holiday clearly this is not Yorkshire in England where I'm sat at the moment but it dawned on me that this is a really really appropriate place to do this video about this book that Strawberry Field in Liverpool have sent me because I'm on the south coast of Spain at the moment you can see into the distance a couple of bits of land sticking out into the sea just beyond that last piece of land there is Almeria which as most of you John Lennon fans out there will know is where he was in 1966 when he was filming How I Won the War and that, just beyond that last little bit of land that you see there is where he wrote Strawberry Fields Forever while he was here recording the film and I've just been given this book and I thought well I'm coming here what a, what a great place to do the video so hopefully this is a little bit more scenic than my normal room so uh, anyway I've spent this week reading this book and I just finished it this morning and I'm going to tell you what I think about it so this book was written by Julia herself no ghost writers or anything like that and you get the sense right from the very start right from the opening chapter that uh, Julia is somebody who still loads of decades later is trying to come to terms with what happened to her as a child what happened to John as a child there's so much information in here about uh, what happened with Aunt Mimi not necessarily the story that you think you know uh, and and how Julia and her sister Jackie were regarded by the rest of the family by Aunt Mimi and her sisters uh, because they'd been uh, born to a different father who uh, who Julia John's mother Julia wasn't married to and, and in those days in Britain that was it was like a completely different scenario back then it was, it was such a different world and I think this book is really interesting even if you weren't a John Lennon fan at all if you were just interested in what Britain was like sort of socially back in the 1950s and 60s this, this is really interesting for sort of telling you about how families interacted each other with each other and how they dealt with things that they might have regarded as scandalous it's a very good uh, portrait of British life in the 1950s is this book but it's clear that Julia is still coming to terms with the loss of her mother all these decades later because of the uh, circumstances in which it happened uh, Julia goes into detail about how you know as soon as her mother died they were shipped off up to Scotland they weren't even told for several weeks that the mother had died they weren't allowed to go to a funeral they weren't allowed to grieve they were just packed off to, aunt, uh, to an auntie up in Scotland so she, you can tell she's still trying to process that she's still trying to process what happened to John so the story that's kind of much told over the years about how um, Aunt Mimi kind of came to the rescue for John when when his, his mother and father were kind of arguing over when, was he going to stay in Liverpool with his mother or was he going to go off to New Zealand with his dad Aunt Mimi comes into the rescue to, to sort of look after John and make sure he doesn't get taken away it actually wasn't really like that at all and, and this book this is first-hand accounts from uh, Mimi's sister um, about 
what actually happened and it's quite different to the story that you might have heard quite a lot so it's I think it's really useful for setting the record straight on things like that there's some fun things in here that, that there's a, a very short section but about how Aunt Mimi came to live at Mendips on Menlove Avenue quite an interesting and funny little story and, and probably not what you would think of as uh, has been the way that someone as straight laced as Aunt Mimi might end up living in a house like that. I won't give it away in case you read the book. Paul McCartney's often talked in interviews about how he's obviously great with kids, he's great at interacting with kids, but John would sometimes say to him, you know, how do you do that? How, you know, how do you speak to them like that? And what you're realising here is from the time that John spent as the big older brother, many years older than, than Julia and, and her younger sister Jackie, that John was actually great. With, with with dealing with those as, as sisters and playing games and, and being the sort of cool, fun big brother. Uh, so it's interesting that maybe John didn't seem to find that as, uh, as easy to do once he got into adult life, but certainly as a teenager, he was a fantastic older brother playing with the kids. One thing that I would be really interested in, and this is something where I, I don't really know where to go for this, so if anybody can help me out, this would be appreciated. We've got a lot of the story from Julia's perspective here, um, about growing up with John and, and the times that they got to spend together as well as the times that were they were ripped apart from being able to spend together but I've never really heard much from John about his side of that story and I don't know whether there's much out there in the way of interviews or, or written down about about how John felt about growing up with younger sisters so if, if any of you know that side of the story if you've got a link to anything or you know of a book that covers that then please let me know because I would really really be interested in reading John's side of that same story. This book's definitely made me think again about the Nowhere Boy movie, a, a movie that I've really enjoyed over the, the last sort of 12, 14 years or so since it came out. But I realise now just sort of kind of how much of it in is, is inaccurate. Uh, there's the scene in the film where um, John's uncle George uh, and Mimi's husband dies and, and like, like John's there, they've just, been, they've just been sort of rigging up some new speakers. The fact is that John wasn't even in the country when uh, when this happened. John was up in Edinburgh. There's the scene at John's mother's funeral where you see his younger sister sort of kind of handing out sandwiches to the, the funeral guests. Well, like I've just said, they weren't even in the country. They were packed off as soon as the accident happened. So uh, there's, there's some sort of quite big things in the Nowhere Boy movie that I realise now are not actually factually correct at all, um, as well as the one that we've always known is a load of nonsense about John supposedly punching Paul um, at John's mother's funeral, which, which we already know is a load of rubbish anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's making me look differently at that movie. And I think like a lot of people, I'd always kind of assumed that Julia didn't necessarily spend much time with John as a child, that it was, you know, that he maybe just started to see his mother again before she died and that he wouldn't have had much inter interaction with his sisters but that's clearly not the case she's got such a story to tell here uh, far beyond what I thought and realised from kind of other books and, and things that I've watched in the past in this book I think Julia has really sort of nailed what her what her role is with this book um, she's, she's got a great story to tell she's got a lot of insight that you're not going to find anywhere else but I think when it comes to the stories about the Beatles, for example, about, um, let's say, John going off to Hamburg, the Beatles becoming famous, releasing the first singles, she knows that that's not really her story to tell. So she doesn't, she doesn't try. She, she knows that, you know, you can go and read a Mark Lewison book and get that story in so much depth. But she does intertwine it with uh, sort of what's going on in her own life at the time for context. So you can see that, for example, this this sort of kind of thing that was happening with Aunt Mimi at the time, that maybe a particular situation that they were dealing with was tied in around the same time as the Beatles were in Hamburg or Cynthia was pregnant with Julia, that kind of thing. So Julia really sort of sticks to her own remit and just builds in bits of the Beatles story around it just for context of, of where it was in the timeline. And I think she's made a good decision there. But then where she does go into a little bit more detail about Beatles stuff is where she was actually there firsthand. So uh, hearing about uh, Julia and the wider family's reactions to the Beatles getting famous and, and suddenly having Big Brother John or Nephew John or whoever he was to, to those individuals and their reaction to, to this fame. You hear stories from Julia about them uh, managing to get into the concerts uh, in Liverpool that the Beatles were doing once they'd found fame and that's really interesting. You kind of see the story that you know but you're seeing it from the sidelines from a point of view that you've maybe never, never really seen before so that's pretty interesting.
as well as having sort of first-hand accounts of, of Julia spending time with John and Cynthia when they lived down in Weybridge and kind of what, what home life was like for John during that time, having somebody who was actually there in the house at the time uh, and living them uh, with them for short periods was, was interesting to see. Thank you very much Strawberry Field for, for giving me this this book um, they haven't told me what to say they haven't given me they haven't sort of insisted that I give it a good review anything like that I wouldn't get involved in that kind of thing uh, but I did really enjoy this book as a as a close-up perspective from a view that we haven't seen before um, although as I realize it's, it's quite an old book it's 15 years old but as I say new to me uh, it's uh, yeah it's worth getting hold of if you are interested in sort of John Lennon's early life looked at from angles that you've not seen before you can get this from strawberry field liverpool uh, website i'll put a link down here for that thank you very much to strawberry field for sending me that and and, and this uh very fetching t-shirt and the other one that they sent me is much much obliged see you again soon bye